welcome back to my channel. It's me, Susu. It's been a long time since I've done a sit down video with you guys, a sit down talk with you guys. And I wanted to do one today. <laughs> so sorry I've been MIA. I've just been, you know, life has been life <laughs> Let's just be real, life has been life -in. But I'll stop posting content consistently very, very soon. Also on our millennial talks, we're gonna be posting consistently on there as well. So in today's video, I wanted to kind of do my testimony, share my journey to Christ with you guys. Um, I did share it on Millennial Talks, which is me and my husband's channel, but I got this great idea from Maya Prasa here on YouTube, and I was like, the way she did was so cool. So I was like, I wanted to share my testimony on my pretty Susu YouTube because I haven't shared it with you guys and some people that are subscribed to my millennial talks I mean some people that are subscribed here probably are not subscribed to my millennial talks So I wanted to share my testimony and show you guys basically how my journey to Christ Came about or how it even happened as you guys noticed there has been a transformation I did talk to you guys about me giving my life to Christ last year and So far so good. It's been great God has been doing so much and honestly I feel better than I've ever felt <laughs> in my entire life but of course with every journey to Christ there is a story and there is a testimony so I want to share with you guys I hope this video helps anybody that might be going through what I went through um, might still be in that season and doesn't think that there's a light at the end of the tunnel I'm here to tell you that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and God will never give you more than you can handle and he will never abandon you. So let's go ahead and jump right into this video. Um, I want to start from the beginning. Um, so first, I did grow up in a Christian home. I grew up knowing God and going to church and basically, you know, just the regular. I feel like a lot of Nigerians do grow up like in the church. But what happens is that we tend to just stray. A lot of stuff happened in my childhood that caused trauma. And I dealt with a lot of trauma and rejection and a broken household at such a young age. And that is when I started to rebel. There was a lot of dysfunctionality in my home at a young age. And my outlet was going out with my friends and partying with my friends and just walling out. When I was 16 years old, I started to drink, smoke, and just go to like go-go's and clubs and stuff. Go-go's are like this little like young, I don't know how to explain it, but like it's a lot of young people and they play go-go music. You're from the DMV, you already know what go-go is. So I was going to go-go's and just hanging around the wrong crowd and basically going down a very, very toxic path. I dealt with a lot of rejection. I dealt with a lot of trauma. I dealt with a lot of pain and wanted to subdue my pain and weed became like an outlet for me that I would participate in because it would numb me. I wouldn't have to think about things. I wouldn't have to feel things. And it helped me out a lot. <laughs> I would definitely say that at that age, I thought it was helping me out. But now that I'm looking back at it, for me to have dealt with what I dealt with when I was younger, I give myself so much grace and so much love because it takes a lot of strength. To deal with that so fast forward I went through a lot of confusion and just running away from myself running away from my problems and eventually I got tired of running and I came to a head after that a friend reached out to me and you know talked to me about Jesus asked me if I wanted to give my life to Christ and I said yes because I was tired of running so at 18 I gave my life to Christ um, fully I cut all of my friends off. I distanced myself from a lot of people. I started going to church. That is also when I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Started to speak in tongues. Every single day, everything was God. <laughs> God, 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 God. Um, I was happy walking with God because I just felt like I finally found um, peace. I finally found peace. And I thought that I dealt with a lot of the traumas until those traumas came back up again. Um, I started to deal with rejection in the church. Once I got into a relationship with my now husband, the church didn't approve of it and it became the church against us. Um, I loved my husband so much and when we met 
It was almost like a divine connection. I felt a strong pull towards him. And it wasn't nothing like weird. It was just like, it was almost like, wow, like there's just something about this person. Um, of course, we didn't start dating when we first met each other. It, we met probably like three, four, five times before we actually exchanged numbers. A friendship was built. We built a friendship. We would talk on the phone, like just be friends, you know. After two, three months, he asked me to be his girlfriend, and I was his girlfriend. I was walking with God, and we were both walking with God. We were both saved, and um, we dealt with a lot of rejection when it came to our relationship and people not wanting us to be together, that we found a safe place in each other. Um, as time progressed, we did fall, we sinned, and we fall into se fell into sexual immorality, and uh, we fornicated. And uh, when we did it, we felt instant guilt because we knew as believers, one of God's um, commandment was thou should not fornicate, thou should not have sex outside of marriage. So uh, we knew we wanted to marry each other, but we were so young, we were like 19 and 18. So it was like, we gotta figure something out. Something happened where I had to leave Maryland and move to Texas. I moved to Texas with my mom and instantly I was greeted with rejection. I did swallow my pride and swallowed how I felt and I just knew that I had to get a job and I had to fend for myself because that was one of the major things that I dealt with or I had realized growing up is that, Susan, you have to fend for yourself. Started working and making money and then um, my relationship with God did get better um, I wasn't sinning. <laughs> it was kind of hard though, because it was like getting pulled left and right. You're like, you, you wanna walk with God and then you have the world that's pulling you on the other side. So I struggled with the two, but I still maintained trying to keep my relationship with God. Fast forward as time progressed, my now husband ended up moving to Texas and we moved in together. We did fall into sexual immorality again and uh, we knew that we couldn't do that anymore, and we knew that that was something that we definitely had to stop, and we had to get married. So my now husband did ask my mom and my stepdad for my hand in marriage, and we got married. At 23, on my 23rd birthday, we got married. And that is when the accuser of the brethren came in. <laughs> so during that time, after I got married, we did struggle a little bit, and I felt like Satan was in my head. I was super depressed and because we struggled I used to think that that was the consequence of me fornicating because I had sex outside of marriage so I felt like God was punishing me because of that. Um, now that I'm like older and wiser in my word definitely shouldn't have let the devil be able to tell me about like all that type of stuff but I was a baby Christian you know, I didn't know no better. And if you don't know the word, if you don't have the word, the word is like a two-edged sword and it cuts so deep. Time progressed and I started to do YouTube. Doing, doing YouTube, I would create, I would always do wigs and do hair. I didn't think that this was gonna be my job. Um, I just kind of stumbled on this. But one thing that I noticed that was different about me was that I always wanted to share my story. I always wanted to share my story. I felt like my story was so powerful that I needed to share. So during that time, after we got married, I started to backslide. And I said this in my last testimony, backsliding is not like a fast thing. Backsliding is a slow, and gradual step and that's why it's important to have brothers and sisters in Christ as accountability partner so that they can help you whenever they notice that you're backsliding. It's important because if you don't have brothers and sisters in Christ, you will backslide and Satan will take you for a fun, 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 fun ride. So I started to backslide, I started to drink, I started to smoke. Well, I wasn't drinking and smoking that heavy. I started to drink and smoke with my cousins. So after that, we ended up moving to Houston. And Houston was a place that I know that God sent us to. We were seeing signs everywhere that said move to Houston. So of course we moved to Houston and a lot of 
chaos happened. Upon moving to Houston, I started to make friends and betrayal kind of came in. And with betrayal, it made my heart start to get cold because I felt like people would betray me. And as time progressed, I would forgive and I would forget. I was not going to church like that. I wasn't on fire for God. I kind of let my fire for God dilute. And the oil in my lantern was definitely like not there, if I'm gonna be real with you. As I'm like living in Houston, I started to want to get a BBL. I wanted to get surgery. I did research on it and I saw that that's how women were having such curvaceous body. And what actually stirred me to want to get surgery was I started to put myself on YouTube more. And with that, people tend to say the most meanest and egregious things to you and your body part. And when you have surgery to fix those things, they like wanna blame you or shame you for it when their words are what made you wanna do those things in the first place, you know? They, they, they call out your insecurity. Because you're on camera, you know, people tend to wanna nitpick certain things about you that you probably weren't paying attention to, but now you're paying attention to it like a mug. So that's what happened. I would do try on hauls and people would talk about my, my big boobs or talk about like, oh, was I pregnant even though I wasn't, like my stomach or like they were just, they would body shame me. So it got to the point where I was just like, I wanna get a BBL. And I tried to do research on it and I, um, I just knew that it was gonna change my life. And yeah, it sounds stupid and ignorant and dumb, but that was my mindset at the time. I mean, I was 24 years old. How smart is a 24 year old? Like, let's be freaking for real. So yeah, I was like, I'm gonna get a BBL, and I did. Um, around that time, I did make friends, and I started to go to the club more, and I could not hear from God at all. No bueno. Could not hear from God at all. I was obsessed with trying to be this person. I was trying to be this person that didn't know God, honestly. And my own delusion was thinking that God still was blessing me and taking care of me. And you guys know, like, you think that <laughs> by you doing things that goes against the word of God, that God is still blessing you. And that was my mindset, honestly. That was my mindset. I thought that God was still blessing me even though I was sinning and I was going to the clubs and I was drinking and I was smoking and I was partying and I was doing all those things. And it even created chaos in my household. You know, because I got married young, I had to grow up really fast and I had to learn how to be a wife. And I didn't know that, how to be a wife. I had to learn that because nobody really teaches you how to be a wife. So. I would go to the clubs and party while my man is in the house. And honestly, now that I'm older looking back, that was very toxic. And I could call myself out on it. But the great thing about life is that you live, you learn, and you change. As time progressed, I was growing with my influence and growing as a content creator, posting makeup, posting fashion. I was literally taking so much pictures, I knew who I wanted to be, I knew where I wanted to go, and I was consistent. I was consistent, I was working, I was, I was tunnel vision. No God, no God. I did not think about God, all I thought about was myself. In those times, I did start to have friendship fallouts, so I, would, I started to grow, grow resentment for people in my life that hurt me, and my heart, <laughs> my heart turned really dark and really, it turned into stone because of all the betrayal from, not only from friends, but from my childhood, the church, friends. So Satan was taking me on a nice ride. He was, he was taking me on a nice ride of feeling hurt by people. 2020 happens and God woke me up. No more slumber. I became more enlightened. I became more um, knowing. I knew a lot of stuff that was happening 
And I was just like, why would God give me this much wisdom? Like, why, why do I know all these stuff? And it would like consume me to the point that I would not like taking pictures, creating content did not matter because in the grand scheme of things, I was like, there's so much crazy stuff happening in this world. Was I sleeping the entire time? I started to get into crystals and sage and new age practices. Well, I wasn't into like those tarot cards, reading stuff. I was like me. I did do it once in the past, but I never like, after I woke up, <laughs> I didn't do any of that. So um, I was into like crystals and um, what else? What else did I, yeah, crystals. And I think that's it. <laughs> that was the only thing that I was in and sage in the house and all that type of stuff. The time that we were away from God, there was confusion. There was literally the spirit of confusion in my household. We moved from Houston to Dallas to Austin to back to Houston. And the thing about it is that if you don't have God in your life, you will be in the wilderness and you're going to be in the wilderness for a very long time until you get it together. And wherever God stationed you to be at, you should stay there. Don't move until God tells you to move because he has you placed in a certain area for a reason. And I was basically running from my problems and not realizing that I needed Jesus the entire time. So 2020 passes, you know, I'm working, I'm posting, but my desire for who I thought I wanted to be or what I wanted from my social media, it changed. It started to dilute. 2021 hit and God was showing me things about myself that I didn't notice. Yeah, it was showing me things about myself that I didn't notice that I needed to fix. So 2022 hit and I I was still going out, still partying, drinking, but it started to slow down a little bit. And I think that I started to notice that I was going down a path that was gonna lead me to nowhere. A direction that I did not need to go, a direction that was gonna lead to destruction. So 2022, you know, I went on vacation with my friends and I thought it was gonna help fix how I've been feeling and it didn't. It didn't, I still felt empty. I still felt empty. Um, I love my friends, I really do, and they know that. I had a great time, I had a great time, but I still felt empty. So one random day, I was going to the nail shop. I love to be by myself. I started to feel, God was isolating me. <laughs> um, yeah, God was isolating me. He wanted me by myself. So I started to distance myself from every friend. And it was harsh, but where God, what God wanted me, where God wanted me, he wanted me by myself in this season, in that season. Um, I still think I'm in that season. I still think so. But anyways, God wanted me by myself in that season. So um, at that time, I was just by myself all the time. And I happened to have went to a nail shop and I met this young lady and she was talking to me. I think I talked to you guys about that. Anyways, I met this young lady and she was talking to me and she started talking to me about God and Jesus and the Bible and it piqued my attention. So I'm like, you know what? Let me exchange numbers with her. I'm gonna go out to eat with her. Um, and we went out to eat and that meeting, that date, that lunch date, literally changed my life. Literally changed my life. There was so many things that we talked about that made me realize that God is 100% real, without a shadow of doubt. When I went back home, I said that I no longer wanna live the life I used to live. I was willing to cut out anything. I was willing to sacrifice anything to just have the peace that I know God gives. Because prior to that, I was dealing with such, such hard times. Satan was messing with my mind. He was messing with my mind. And one thing about it is that Satan doesn't attack you anywhere but your mind. He attacks your mind. Because once he's able to get into this, it can destroy you. That's why some people kill themselves because um, they've let the devil 
tell them lies because Satan is nothing but the father of lies. So I honestly, <laughs> the, the peace that God was going to give me, I wanted it. I did not want whatever the devil had for me. I did not want it anymore. I was tired. I was tired. I, I, I did it my way. <laughs> I did it my way and it was trash, okay? I did it my way and my way was trash with no result, bad result, results that made no sense. And just feeling that pain and feeling rejection and being a people pleaser and not feeling like I'm good enough and not feeling like I'm worthy, all those things, no, I couldn't do it anymore. So after having the meeting, I went back home and I got on my knees and I cried out to God and I told God, I want to come back home. Forgive me. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to take things into my own hands. I don't want to do life by myself. I don't want to figure this by myself. I don't want to figure things out by myself, God. I want you to reign supreme in my life. So that's when things started changing. And I was very proud enough to say it on my platform that I gave my life to Christ. So I made it my mission. I said that I wanna finish the entire Bible. I wanna know God. Because when I first got saved, I knew the idea of God. I knew religion God. But I wanna know God. And his word is alive. And if I'm able to know God and know what he likes and knows what he doesn't like and know him and be in fellowship with him, it will make me see things differently. So that's what I did. I started to read the Bible and I read 10 chapters a day. I made it my sole mission that the first thing I did was wake up in the morning, not touch my phone, but read my word. So I started in Genesis and as I'm reading the Bible, it's like the Bible's coming alive and I'm just like, how did I miss this? How did I know, not know this? And I'm reading this part of the Bible and it talks about a wicked person and their ways and how it leads to destruction. And I was just like, wow, like that was the path that I was on. So as I'm reading the word and months are passing by, God is literally just refining me and he's transforming me. And my zeal for God is growing. My love for God is growing. I am in fellowship with him. I am consecrated in him. And now it's like my relationship with God is now personal. And I thought I knew God before, but I don't think I knew God at all because Upon finishing the Bible, which I did, thank God. Upon finishing the Bible, I was like, wow, I never knew God. I thought I knew him, but I never knew him. I knew the idea of God. I, the God that I knew was the God that everybody else was telling me, not the God of the Bible. So as I'm reading the Bible and my heart is transforming, God is transforming me, the desires that I thought I used to have started to go away. And it was no longer my career, then everything else. It was now God, then everything else. And one thing the Bible says is, seek ye, the, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall follow. So I started to seek the kingdom of God. I started to seek God like my daily bread, like water. I started to seek him and pray and really be in his presence and be very um, cautious about what I said and how I behaved. And that's when I just cut everything cold turkey. Drinking, smoking, partying, secular music. I cut it off cold turkey because now my eyes was truly open and I could see things for what it was. And My walk with God has been such an interesting one because God gives us multiple chances. 
but some of us don't take it. We think that God is going to wait for us. And God really doesn't owe us anything. I used to be like, oh, I'm God's favorite. I'm God's favorite, but still sinning, but still living my life carnally, but still doing whatever I wanted to do. I'm my like, God's favorite. No, Satan had me fold up. I thank God that he gives us multiple chances to get it right. I'm glad that I am where God wants me to be. And I'm glad that he gave me yet another chance because now I know him. And I could probably say, I know God. Like I know God and God knows me. And through everything that I've been through, through the pain, the hurt, the rejection, the people pleasing, through all of that. The woman I am right now is a woman I am so proud of. And nobody can tell me anything about myself. My mind has never been so clear because now when the devil tries it, I have the word of God to smack him down. Because the devil tries to accuse us. He accuses the saints every day. He accuses the saints every day. But God said, touch, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. So I come here to say this because a lot of you guys might feel like God does not love you. God is a God of chances. And he's going to give you chances to get it right. But do not take God's love and his grace for granted or advantage. Don't take his love for advantage. There's nothing wrong with wanting nice things. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be successful, but you never trump your desire for God. And that was one thing that I learned. And one thing that I realized was that in the past, my desire for my career and success trumped my love for God. But this time around, my love for God trumps my desire for everything else. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did ramble, but I really hope this video was helpful. I love you guys so much. Um, if you guys liked this video, give it a big old thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.